We're working to still get everyone here. Our expectation at this point is that people will be, everyone will be able to report as scheduled and uh, proceed from there. As I mentioned, we're in the process of working through intake testing, and that uh, started uh, two days ago, excuse me, started on Friday. Uh, and now we're in the process of getting back those results. To date, there have not been any positive tests on any of the intake testing we've received so far. The medical protocols that are in place are really um, stringent and well-designed to try to keep everyone healthy. But we have um, considered and are implementing some enhanced measures for uh, players or staff that may be at heightened risk. And so we'll work with each of those individuals to figure out what works best based upon their job function uh, and how we can further mitigate risk for them. I think right now, again, based upon where we sit today and the conversations we've had with each of those individuals, we expect them to continue to work as part of the team and um, be there with us and travel with us. If at some point um, any of those individuals have reservations about doing that, we would revisit. But at least as we sit here today, our expectations are that they will be in there in the environment working with us, um, um, not remotely. Every step of the way from the time, you know, we way back in March, we have always prioritized the health and safety of our staff and players. We will continue to let that guide us as we move forward. And in the event any of our staff members feel that this, there's an elevated risk or the risk is beyond what they're comfortable with, we'll reassess. And if that means we're in a different situation two days from now or a week from now than we are today, that's okay. We'll revisit it then. The first thing we needed to do was really think about the depth that we needed to make sure we had at that camp to be able to support our major league team for the 60 games and hopefully a postseason. And that was the primary consideration that we went in, in putting together the roster. After we worked through that, we determined how many spots we had potentially remaining that would be more development, developmentally focused. And in each instance, we went through our system and then tried to identify which players might benefit the most from the development environment. And that the, what, there were a combination of factors that led into that, not just bringing them back to Lake County to, to be in our environment, but what was their training environment in their home um, situation or the city in which they were training. And there was no exact formula or science to it, but we got a lot of opinions and a lot of feedback from a lot of different people to figure out which players would make the most sense for us to bring. He, he's an option. I mean, it, we do think that he has, you know, he first and foremost needs to get back out and pitch and we did prioritize getting him um, developmental reps because he has missed some time with some injuries so we thought that he could be a guy that would benefit from coming into the environment getting support of our medical and, and performance teams and get back out on the mound and, and compete and then we can make the determination at that point um, whether or not he might be depth for us we'll try to weigh all of the information I think we'll try to do it in a way that makes sense and maybe not overly focus on what happens in the last day or two, but really look at all of the information and the balance of the information to help um, us decide what the best roster looks like. Um, I think this time maybe a little bit more unique than even a normal spring training is there will be a function of just the player's readiness um, once they show up because three weeks doesn't give players a lot of time to make up for any lost ground. So based upon the information we have right now and the communication we've had with our players uh, through our coaching staff and our um, performance staff, we believe all of our players are coming into spring training 2.0 in a really good spot, ready to hit the ground running um, and to go out and prepare for a season. To the extent that's not the case for an individual, that could have an impact on our decisions. To my knowledge, there have not been any changes in the protocols. Again, they were designed to really limit the the vast majority of the protocols are designed to limit any spread of the virus within our facilities there are a portion of the protocols that are that do talk about behavior away from the ballpark um, but admittedly that's a, a smaller percentage than what the protocols look like once they're here and there have not been any changes to those in the last few days but i do think tom you're raising a very good point like What's happened in different communities over the course of the last few weeks is a great reminder for us and just how vigilant we need to be. Because as soon as we let our guard down, um, 
the virus has a chance to take hold and spread among our group. And we need to make sure we stay vigilant and do everything we possibly can to make sure that doesn't happen. We do expect to fill the final five spots. Exactly how we fill those spots, um, we'll have to take. We'll take a little bit of time to sort through. Um, there may be some players that we bring in from outside the organization, and then we'll really want to get a sense of because this is all new to us. Um, let's get the guys that we we have. Let's see where we are. Let's see what additions we may want to make to that roster. Whether we want to bring in another few players that would support the depth of our major league team or potentially be more developmentally focused. But we thought there would be some benefit to having some flexibility because as much as we tried to prepare for the decisions and make the best decisions we could with the information we had, we recognize it's imperfect and things could change quickly. So having some flexibility with those last few, last few spots we thought would be beneficial for us. We are, and the protocols have been designed to limit you know, limit spread even if one person tests positive. So um, I don't think that would change if more people tested positive. It would just be there are more people that would be following kind of the isolation protocols and all the protocols that are in place when there's a positive test. To the extent there's any individual who may be deemed higher risk, mm -hmm. we would take extra precautions for that group of people. We will not be playing games against other teams. They would be playing intra-squad games okay. uh, against each other. And so I, 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 let, me, let me separate that out. In spring training, that group of players will likely play um, intra-squad games or be intermixed mm -hmm. with the players we have in Cleveland to, to play regular um, intra-squad games between the time we report and the end of spring training. Once we break for the regular season, that the number of people in that pool will grow because some of the people from pro, some of the players from progressive field that don't make the team will join that depth pool. Then that group of players that is working out in Lake County will play kind of sim, simulated games against each other, but would not play against other teams. Our, our hope and expectation is that we will play three exhibition games in spring training against another major league opponent. We're working through the logistics of that now. I think in the near term, Tom, there is so much excitement and enthusiasm to get back to baseball that guys literally can't wait to get here and get started and be around their teammates and get back to preparing for a season. And my sense is that enthusiasm will continue um, into the regular season. Now, I do think it might be challenging, you know, playing guys are used to playing in front of a lot of people and the emotions of the crowd. So I think. Um, you know, that will be an adjustment for them, but we see it again. Our guys do a great job of reframing things because it's an opportunity for us to handle that adversity better than another team. And Tito talks about this every year in spring training. The success of our team will be defined by how we overcome those obstacles, how we come together to overcome that adversity. And to the extent we can do that better than other teams, that gives us a chance to win more games and get to get to and play in the postseason. Again, Tito's always obsessing over about the team identity and the culture that we're continuing to, to build. And that's continued over this period of quarantine. I mean, we've had multiple um, small group player calls. We've had full group uh, player calls. And I know Tito's already planning his messaging for when guys uh, arrive this week. And a big part of that, we'll be talking about some of those same themes and an urgency to come together as a team, maybe even more quickly than we have in the past. Again, I give our pitching group and our performance group a ton of credit for the interactions that they've had with our players to help prepare them, both mentally and physically, to be able to hit the ground running. And we've done that through, we, through dialogue with players where they're self-reporting how they're doing, but we've also seen it through video and through data and evidence, whether that's um, radar guns, track man, rap soto, whatever those um, technologies that are available to them to be able to provide some feedback and our coaches then have some objective measures beyond just what players are self-reporting. So we're going into it thinking that our, our pitchers will come in ready to go and compete in, a, in some form of game environment. And I would say that would be the case for at least 80%. Of them. There is a bit of a different dynamic on the economics of playing major league games versus minor league games. I think major league games, you, know, you can make the economics work in some way without fans. I think with minor leagues, 
not having the ability to or, or generating the same type of revenue from broadcast that they are entirely dependent upon fans uh, attending games and to the extent there remains limits on fans playing it's really hard to see minor league baseball getting back up and running you continue workouts all the way up and until July 3rd. So some of the group, smaller group workouts that we've had at Progressive Field, as new players are cleared through the intake process, they can join that group of players that's conducting smaller group workouts. But full workouts will not begin until July 3rd. Everyone's coming in healthy and ready to compete. Carrasco, um, Tyler Naquin, uh, everyone's uh, ready to go.